Okay. Yeah, in this matter, on behalf of my colleagues, we regret the delay in finalizing and delivering this judgment. Only now is mainly because of the workload in this division and the complexity of the special defenses and uh, the merits in this matter. We have set as three judges, and uh, this is the judgment of the court. We all agreed to the order that I will make. I did not prepare a summary, and will just uh, hand down the judgment by reading the order. I've made enough copies, which will be made available to those who are interested in having a copy of the judgment. The order of the court is as follows. One, the application is dismissed with cost, Roman one. The costs include, in respect of the first and the third respondents, the cost of five counsel with one senior counsel, Roman two. In respect of the fourth to fifth respondent, the cost of two counsel, including one senior counsel, and in respect of the sixth respondent, two counsel with one senior, I hand down the judgment. Okay, the, the court will adjourn so that I can proceed with my roll call later. Court adjourns.
so much for your presence here today. My name is Charity McCourt. I'm the media aide to the federal leader. On my left is the federal leader, and to my right is Dr. Liam Schreiber, the DA's shadow minister for public service and administration. Just for a little bit of context, this case was argued here on the 23rd and 24th of January, 2023, and judgment was then reserved. So today the judgment has been delivered. I'll now call upon the federal leader to unpack the judgment for you and just tell you on the next steps that the DA will be taking. Thank you. Over to you. Uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you very much for making the time to be here today. Uh, at the outset, let me express our disappointment in the judgment that has been handed down today. As a party that respects the rule of law and the Constitution, uh, we respect the judgment. However, we do believe that a number of errors in law uh, and in interpretation have been made in this particular judgment, particularly at Section 40D of the judgment, where the courts refer to what they call a bright line between state and party that is observed. It goes without saying that influencing government decisions is not the same as political meddling in the affairs of government. We believe this is a significant underestimation of the scourge of cadre deployment and its terrible effects on the South African life and the circumstances in which many of us and our citizens find ourselves in today. It also flies in the face of the comments made by the then Deputy Chief Justice Zondo at the Zondo Commission, who said that it should be illegal for anybody to influence the uh, appointment of people based on nothing other than their party affiliation. We maintain that the practice of cadre deployment is a violation of the constitutional provisions, which says that nobody should be discriminated or advanced on the basis of their party affiliation. And we believe that the judgment has missed out on this significantly. We believe, too, that the recently released cadre deployment minutes, which are now in our possession, and which we are busy collating, compiling, and putting into a searchable database, flies in the face of the court's so-called suggestion of a bright line between the state and party. The minutes, as we've already seen from information that is now in the public domain, went so far as to influence judicial appointments and various other key appointments across the state. This is a clear violation of the principle of the separation of powers, and we believe that the court has not taken the terrible effect of cadre deployment into account in this particular matter. Cadre deployment is not some benign practice that inflicts no harm. It is a malignant practice that has infected and bedeviled every aspect of the state. Cater deployment is also not a victimless crime. Every time the lights go off, every time a factory is shut down, every time that water stops running in taps, every time one of the state-owned entities fails to fulfill its responsibilities and requires another big bailout, is as a result of cater deployment. And you can track back the terrible appointments made to many of these key institutions that have hollowed them out so dramatically that they are unable to perform even their most basic of functions. Ports that cannot operate effectively, an electricity generator and supplier that cannot generate or supply electricity, taps running dry across the country, hospitals that do not have sufficient nurses and doctors. These are the human face of those who suffer from cadre deployment. What we will be doing is appealing this judgment. Our legal team is, is busy as we speak, uh, digesting the judgment, but we will appeal it to the SCA and potentially directly to the Constitutional Court. We believe there can be no greater constitutional imperative than to deal with this particular matter and its effects on South Africa. If cadre deployment is continued and supported in its current form, it will continue to undermine the state and it will continue to cause great harm to the South African people and their prospects for the future. I would, however, like to add that today we know the date of the election. And the silver bullet to end cadre deployment once and for all is actually a few months away. 
We don't need to wait for long, drawn-out court processes and appeals. We can end CADA deployment with a silver bullet on the 29th of May. And that silver bullet is by voting the ANC out and voting the DA into national government. We have made a commitment, and I repeat that commitment to each and every South African today, that should we be in a position to be a national government, we will, within the first 100 days, table in Parliament the end CADA deployment bill, which will end this practice once and for all, for all political parties in South Africa, to ensure that we have an independent civil service that is free of political interference and where people are appointed on merit and ability to do the job, not on the colour or style of the membership card of the party they belong to that sits in their back pocket. These fights are never easy, and we bring these fights on behalf of the South African people. People who have written to us in recent days, and both Lyad and I received a very impassioned email from a civil servant that had been pushed out of advancement and opportunity and watched as his years of experience were simply pushed aside in favor of people who were higher up in the party echelons. It is that that is driving excellence from our public service. So, we may not have made it over this first hurdle, but I can assure you, like any elite athletes, we will get up and we will get back onto that track, off to the SCA, off to the Constitutional Court, and I commit to all South Africans that we will never, ever, ever stop fighting until this scourge of cadre deployment ends. But if you want to see it coming to an end, if you want to see the end of this policy once and for all, the easiest, quickest route to do so is by using your vote on the 29th of May to vote the ANC out and to vote a new government in that's going to introduce merit, ability to do the job and excellence back to our civil service. So not only can we get our civil service working again, we can get South Africa working again, but we can also get a huge number of South Africans who are now unemployed working again. Thank you very much. I'll now hand over to Dr. Leon Schreiber, and then we'll obviously take whatever questions you may have afterwards. Thank you. Thank you very much to the federal leader, John Steenhuisen, and thank you very much to all the media colleagues who came out today. I want to make one important point right at the start. This fight did not start yesterday and it will not end today. The DA has been fighting against cadre deployment since its introduction back in 1997 at the Mafeking Conference of the ANC. All the way back in the year 2000, the DA's predecessor published a document called All Power to the Party, which warned of exactly the consequences that cadre deployment would have on the state. The dry taps, the electricity running out, the failure of infrastructure. That is now the warning that has come to pass. And over the last five years, we have similarly worked tirelessly against this issue. We have introduced an end cadre deployment bill in Parliament, which was supported by every opposition party. It was only the ANC that stood against it. We have submitted dozens of parliamentary questions. We have won three different court cases to gain access to the ANC's cadre deployment minutes. And we will now pursue this particular fight with exactly the same vigor and focus that we have pursued all other elements of this particular campaign. This is not a battle against cadre deployment. This is a war against corruption. And a war has battles, but it has an ultimate victor. The DA is going to emerge as the victor on this front because we are going to defeat the scourge. As Mr. Steenhuisen says, we are considering direct application to the Constitutional Court because there can be no more serious constitutional matter than the question of a political party destroying the independence and capacity of the state and the civil service. I want to go a step further about the election. The 29th of May, following this court judgment today, the 29th of May has just become a referendum on CADA deployment. The power is now in the hands of the people of South Africa. We will continue this fight. We will pursue it all the way up to the Constitutional Court. But we know how long it takes. We know the delays involved. Trust me, I just spent three years trying to get a hold of cadre deployment documents. So if you don't think South Africa has another three years, if you don't want to wait another decade and watch things collapse around you, then you have the power to vote in the referendum on cadre deployment on the 29th of May. The DA is the only party 
that not only talks about a capable state, but fights for it actively and delivers it where we govern. That is why we have pledged as one of our seven APEX priorities that we will abolish cater deployment within our first 100 days in government. So this court's ruling today is a message to the people of South Africa. The power is now in your hands. Do you want to continue with failing service delivery, with load shedding, with dry taps, with unemployment? Or do you want to set South Africa on a better path where we employ the best among us to serve the most vulnerable among us? That is the referendum on cater deployment that this country will confront on the 29th of May. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Schreiber. Colleagues will now open for two rounds of questions. May we please, in the interest of time, restrict it to two questions at most per person and also to the matter at hand. Kenny Mapanga. Thank you. Kenny uh, Mapanga from the SADP. Um, both to Mr. Kenzie and Mr. Schreiber. I mean, this is a judgment by a full bench. Um, one could consider that to be quite a strong judgment. I mean, do you really think it's successful at this point to try and appeal further? And does this judgment not uphold the fact that it might not be policy itself, but rather the spirit of corruption that may be perpetrated and may be identified in these uh, different uh, institutions? Thank you. Alpha Ramshana. Um, morning, good evening. Alpha here from High Wisdom News. Um, you have received, you received uh, ANC documents uh, two days ago. Uh, would you make those documents public? And number two, I assume that you've assessed those documents. What have you found from those documents? Thank you. Any hands, colleagues? Okay, Kevin. Um, Kevin from ENCA. John, I just want to know um, do you see this judgment? Um, taking the punch out of whatever announcement, I believe that there's going to be an announcement on Friday on the content of the documents. Do you see that this judgment takes the punch out of whatever you'll be sharing then? Sure. Okay, over to you, John. Thank you. I think that what we'll be releasing later this week, if we decide to go down that path and the documents are ready, will be a punch to this judgment. Because this judgment refers to the, as I said, this clear line. What those documents demonstrate very clearly is that there is no line and that people are chosen based on their loyalty to the, to the party, their assessment and longevity of service to the organization rather than on merit. We've already seen today how there was a direct interference in the operation and the independence of the Chief Justice and the Judiciary. So I think that if anything, these documents that we've received are going to be a devastating blow to aspects of this judgment. And that is why we will include them now, the full sets of minutes, in any supplementary uh, legal papers that we bring because it fundamentally disproves this court's assertion that this was some benign advisory system. It was not. Very clear you can trace the CADA Deployment Committee's decisions being actively implemented, despite in some cases very grave reservations expressed from various other people. Uh, Cami, on your question, I think there are many full bench decisions that have been overturned in the Constitutional Court. And I remember that our, I'm reminded today of our battle around in Kandla. It took us to take that all the way to the Constitutional Court before we were able to actually see justice in a judgment handed down by Mukweng Mukweng. So I believe that the Constitutional Court is the right court for, to be seized with this matter, precisely because they are responsible for the interpretation of the Constitutional uh, constitutional matters. It is also why we have superior courts, the SCA and the Constitutional Court, because there's an acceptance, even amongst the judiciary, that they don't always get it right. And whilst I respect their judgment today, I don't believe they've got it right, and that is why we believe we will be successful in an appeal, and we believe that a court, looking now at the supplementation of the submission, containing the minutes, etc., which now provide clear, direct evidence would, um, would, would not come to another conclusion other than this is not a benign policy, it is a malignant policy that is, uh, that is causing a huge interference. May I also just make the point that the court in deciding to release the CADA deployment minutes to the DA and our PAI application is further confirmation, we believe, that the exercise of a party power has had a direct influence in an exercise of a public power and an appointment power. The court would not have granted us access to the internal minutes 
of a committee of a party had they not believed that the actions in those and the decisions taken in those rooms ultimately resulted in a public action and I believe that that will also strengthen the case going forward. Leon, I don't know if you want to answer yep. the gentleman uh, directly. Thanks. Yes, thank you. Just uh, to add, we mustn't forget the State Capture Commission's report as well when considering Kenny th this particular question, because that report made it very clear that this practice was part of laying the foundation for, for, for the ultimate state capture. So the two clearly are linked, and that is part of the argument that we will put forward in addition, of course, to what um, we've now found. I want to say about the records that today's ruling actually vindicates how important it was for us to pursue that, again, for three years through three different court processes. Because those minutes, those records, will now come into their own when we are able to actually take this forward and, and table devastating additional evidence before the court. Um, I want to say to you that we are currently processing hundreds of these documents and our undertaking all along is that we will make them public. It's just that some of them were very poorly scanned, some of them are difficult to read, and we have now also received hard copies. So, as often happens, the DA will have to fix what the ANC couldn't do. We will rescan the documents so that you can actually also read them and understand what is in there. I do want to say this morning, without being able to reveal in full detail what is in those documents, there exists in South Africa today a WhatsApp group for cadre deployment a WhatsApp group inside the ANC that says, please forward the CVs of these people because there's currently a vacancy. There exists in South Africa today a database with the headline, Caders for Consideration, names of 171 individuals who are pre-selected inside the ANC for deployment. We have, those, that we have that database and we are currently, as the leader says, making them searchable. There is no person in this country who could hear about a political party with a WhatsApp group that influences appointments, about a political party with a database of pre-selected cadres for deployment, and not understand that this is the fundamental reason we have seen service delivery collapse across society. And that is why we are going to make it public, so that the people of South Africa can judge for themselves, and as I've said, be informed on the day of this referendum on CADA deployment on the 29th of May that we, we know as the election. Thank you. Thank you so much. Last round of questions. Thanks, colleagues. In the absence of that, uh, this that's... One. Just, just one thing, Luna uh, from the men and Abbey. Obviously, what I want to just understand is, with those minutes of the CADA deployment, are you in any chance going to also give us one for the DA, the terms of the DA on how you how you deploy your, your people and government? Over to you. I'll deal with that. Thank you. Um, there is no cater deployment in the DA. There never has been and there never will be. The document to which I presume you are referring to is a document from which Mr. Cameron Dogbo has, uh, has, has quoted very selectively. If you read to the end of that document, Minister Bradell makes it very clear that he is questioning why the person who achieved the highest score in that instance is not being selected. Let me tell the people of South Africa through the Mail and Guardian that we do not practice cadre deployment. When I became the leader of the party, the very first resolution that I took as the federal leader of the party was to indicate that no matter relating to municipal personnel, the deployment of any official in a government would ever, ever come to the federal executive. And that, I can tell you, has been followed to the letter. We do not have a database of people who should be deployed. There is no cadre deployment WhatsApp group in the DA. We believe that the success of precisely provinces like the Western Cape are because of the fact that the most suitable person for the job has been selected. It is not by accident that the Western Cape achieves clean audits across all government departments. It's not by accident that the Western Cape last year created over 300,000 new jobs for unemployed citizens. 
It's not by accident that the highest access to basic services, the highest access to decent quality education and health care takes place in the Western Cape. And that is because our approach to government is putting the very best person for the job into that particular position because when you put the best person into the job, the services follow. And that's how you introduce clean and accountable government. And that's why we don't talk about job creation, we create jobs. It's why we don't talk about a capable state, we deliver a capable state. So I challenge anybody, anybody, to come forward exposing any DA cater deployment WhatsApp group <laughs> or any DA database of caters along with their CVs that are ready to be deployed. There is no such thing. And if there was, I've no doubt that the Mail and Guardian would have been the first to put it on their front page. Thank you. <laughs> Colleagues, I'm now going to release the leadership. Thank you so much. That concludes our press briefing for today. Thank you. Thank you. No, it's not Okay, I'm just going to go do some Afrikaans right there. Never mind. Hello, Mariska. Hello. I'm going to go to the next one. Yo, I was... It was warm, right? Yeah, it was warm. It was in the boot. Public. The rule of law is a foundation stone of the national democratic society that we seek to build by working together with all South Africans. We note that despite the fact that these records were applied for by Dr. Schreiber in his capacity as a member of parliament and that the court explicitly ruled that the DA was not entitled to these documents, they are now being released publicly. Um, in a piecemeal and distorted manner. Accordingly, the ANC has decided that in the interest of transparency, accountability and informed public debate on cater development and deployment by all parties, we have released all the above records on our website and I do urge members of the media to visit our website uh, for the site of those records. We call upon all political parties, including the DA, to do likewise. Secretary General Comrade Figil Mbalula will hold a press briefing tomorrow to provide further information on the process and details of the press conference will be communicated in due course. Thank you. Well, we cannot uh, deny them the right that they have uh, in the Constitution. Anybody has got a right to appeal. We have appealed judgments that were not in our favor as well. But uh, we are emboldened by the decision of the court. We believe that it is a correct decision. We also believe that the DA itself has a duty to declare its own cater deployment records. The ANC has a lot of that and uh, look out for further information that we are going to be putting out in the public domain. Let's go to, uh, you know, um, toe to toe on this issue. We absolutely have a lot uh, of information about cater deployment in the city of Tswane, which is in the 
public domain for that matter, uh, a matter of um, a bouncer that uh, was uh, appointed in the office of the mayor without requisite qualifications, earning over a million per annum, a matter of several deployments in the city of Cape Town. Uh, all of that detail is going to be out. Well, I would have to say, go into the minutes in detail on our website. I'm happy to come back to um, News 24 and engage further on that detail. Is the ANC prepared for people, for the people who might come and say they were pushed aside uh, in, and cater the given job, launching these uh, methods in, in court? Is, is it prepared for that? The ANC is prepared to, as we say in our statement, the ANC is prepared to account for mishaps in as far as cadre deployment is concerned. If you look at our renewal agenda, you will see that uh, even when we talk about our candidate selection process, even if we talk about the professionalization of uh, the civil service, um, we are very strong on making sure that uh, meritocracy is upheld. Um, um, the, the DI said there is a WhatsApp group um, within the INC uh, regarding cadre deployment and which, uh, in where cadre deployment is being discussed on this WhatsApp group. Um, can, you res can you respond to that? Well, it is that uh, WhatsApp group is known to the DA, it's certainly not known to me, not known to the African National Congress. But uh, we must say that uh, we applaud the court for a just decision. And uh, one of the things that happened with the ANC is that uh, even when the court rules not in our favor, we go out of our way uh, to note the judgment, to study the judgment, and where we think there's no need to appeal because it is a just decision, we don't appeal. Where there is a need to appeal, we do appeal. But uh, the detail is going to be shared by the SG tomorrow. Um, I can say look out for the fact that uh, we know that this is a political strategy. It's not a matter of um, fairness and justness. It's not a matter of uh, anything wrong about the carer deployment policy because all of the parties in South Africa and elsewhere do practice it. The statement that we released some two or three days ago, we went into detail to show how, even according to OECD, this is um, de deployed as a policy in the global north, in the global south, there is absolutely nothing remiss with a cadre de de development and deployment strategy. How we apply it is what we need to improve on, and uh, we also have uh, successful stories of uh, cadres that have been deployed. And I must also say that uh, some of the people that have made South Africa proud are not even ANC members, may have been recommended through the deployment committee, but not even ANC members, patriots, who have gone on to really excel in their respective areas. So it is also a falsehood to suggest that cadre deployment is about ANC members or ANC cadres. Those are some of the falsehoods that, uh, in the fullness of time, we will continue to clarify. That is ongoing, yes, uh, that is ongoing, and that is certainly something we are very much determined to do uh, because the name MK, the emblem that is being used, the logo that is being used, belongs to the trademark of the African National Congress. We are not going to relent on that for as long as uh, they continue to use this uh, glorious uh, name of this glorious uh, 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 army mm -hmm. that uh, 
is a product of the African National Congress. And you say the registration, there's also a problem with the registration as a political party. Are you going to pursue that as well? Yes, we are pursuing that as well. We are right, right there with the electoral court, mm -hmm. and uh, that is ongoing. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, we're done. Sorry. <laughs> Line of work gets up now.